Hello and welcome to this ICD-11 workshop video. I'm Dr. Islam Ibrahim from the National Center for Health Information, and this video is specially made for doctors working in Parwaniya Hospital. Today we'll be talking about why we need to code diseases, your role as a clinician, then we'll be introducing ICD-11, we'll be talking about how to find an ICD-11 code and how to add detail to your diagnosis on ICD-11. So why do we need to code diseases? Coding is very important because it enables us to speak one language. Think about the inconsistencies in our documentation. One doctor may use end-stage renal disease. Another doctor for the same case would document stage five chronic kidney failure. The truth is they are both the same. What ICD-11 does is that it unifies or standardizes the way we document diagnoses. Through ICD coding, the WHO has taken up the challenge of overcoming language barriers by creating a unified classification system that serves as an international standard to allow for comparable data. This unifies the way we report diagnoses, irrespective of the language of documentation or the different synonymous terms we use. But why do we need to speak the same language? Using consistent data enables us to count. Rising above single patient care to caring for the whole community. This data can now be analyzed, presented, and used for decision making. At the hospital level, it can guide us to add more beds or doctors to one ward or another. It helps with research. At the national level, it helps us set health policies and resource allocation. It is also used internationally. Take a look at this map, for example. It shows the percentage of people aged 20 to 79 who have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Unless we all use a standard way for coding diagnoses all over the world, we would never be able to have this map. As clinicians, what's our role? Your role as a clinician is to write a full detailed diagnosis, keeping in mind that you are the source of health data that informs decision making for the whole healthcare system. We already have ICD-10, so why are we moving on to ICD-11? The ICD-10 list on your system was obtained from the ICD-10 Volume 1. ICD-11, on the other hand, is an electronic web-based search engine that works very much like Google. The options in the ICD-10 list were very limited, and many of you complained that they could not find the diagnoses they were looking for. ICD-11, however, includes synonyms and is very flexible with spelling. ICD-10 is medically outdated, whereas ICD-11 is updated online and all the new terms and diagnoses are added regularly. ICD-10 could not be searched using abbreviations, at least not the list on your system. ICD-11, however, includes known and common abbreviations. You've diagnosed this case with STEMI. First, you free text your principal diagnosis, but you also need to add the ICD-11 code. To do that, click this icon. This opens up a new window. Type in your search term into the search box. ICD-11 provides you with a list of options. Read them carefully and choose the one you want. In this case, it's right there, acute ST elevation myocardial infarction. Now you need to save this by clicking on Save. It tells you that the OICD code has been saved successfully. Moving back to your mode of transmission screen, you can see that the entity title has been added on the right side. Now try it yourself. Try coding STEMI. If you're not on the hospital information system, you can always use the ICD-10 online coding tool. The link is on the screen. Because ICD-11 works more like Google, it searches while you type. Let's take this case of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children with COVID-19. You will notice that once you start typing in the search box, ICD-11 guesses the word being typed, providing all possible options on the left side. Selecting one word from the list helps you narrow down your search results that appear on the right. Let's click on the word we want. This gives us the only diagnosis that includes the word. 
Click on this entity and save it onto the system. Here is a patient with bilateral diabetic cataract due to type 2 diabetes. After pretexting the principal diagnosis, let's select the ICD-11 code. Type in diabetic cataract into your search box. ICD-11 gives us an exact match highlighted in blue. But be careful, we're not done yet. Always check your search results for the plus sign. A red plus means you need to add detail to your diagnosis. In ICD-11 terms, that's called post-coordination. The red plus means it's mandatory. The gray plus means it's optional. Here there's a red plus. This means post-coordination is mandatory. Now click the red plus. More information appears about this diagnosis. The part we're concerned with is the post-coordination. Click the blue link to open the browser to add the post-coordinated detail. Again, the only part we're concerned with is the post-coordination. Notice that it says code also, which means we must add the causing condition. In this case, it's type 2 diabetes, so click this option. The ICD-11 code for your selected post-coordination appears here. You can also, if you scroll down, add laterality. Now this is optional and you can see that it says use additional code if desired. In this case, we do want to use it because we know it's bilateral diabetic cataract, so we want to add this part. Post-coordination helps you improve your documentation by reminding you of what kind of details should be added to the diagnosis. Many times you forget to add whether diagnosis was left or right, whether it was acute or chronic, and sometimes you forget to add the cause for a certain injury, like a road traffic accident or a fall. This is very important. Post-coordination reminds us of these items that we need to add to a diagnosis. Now try it yourself. Try coding bilateral diabetic cataract due to type 2 diabetes. Now again, if you're not on the hospital information system, you can use the online ICD-11 coding tool. The link is on the screen. Here are some useful tips. When adding detail to your diagnosis, you can use the search box to look for the detail you want. This will be very useful as we will see as we work through our exercise. This arrow means there's more detail under this title. If you want to see the sublist, click on this arrow. Most often typing into the ICD-11 search box will give you the result or diagnosis you're looking for. However, we need to know what to do when we look up a diagnosis and don't find it. For example, if you use the wrong spelling. When ICD-11 cannot find words that match your search and therefore cannot find any matching ICD-11 entities, it provides you with the option to try flexible search. This is very much like Google. When you look up something on Google, for example, with a spelling mistake, Google provides you with search results that are as close as possible to your search terms, despite the spelling. If this doesn't work, it may be because you've written too much detail into your search box. Try breaking down your search term by removing extra details. For example, instead of looking up peptic ulcer with acute gastrointestinal bleeding, Break it down and search peptic ulcer alone and then post-coordinate that to add the extra detail by adding the acute gastrointestinal bleeding as a post-coordination. This may become more clear as we work through the hands-on exercise. We have now reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. We strongly recommend that you give this hands-on exercise a try.